guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. So, this has been a very, very long time coming and honestly, I've tried to film this three times already. I tried to film yesterday where, um, basically, it was it's just the intro to a vlog, but Sean had um, an appointment, which is the reason why we're filming this, is because we do have some stuff to update you on. Let's start with the main point. The main point being like Sean's health and how things are going with that. So essentially with his tumour like he said, um, everything is the same size which is obviously still great. Um, I kind of had a feeling that everything was going to be okay. You had your MRI on June 1st and up until now I'm filming this today is 25th of July. His appointment was yesterday the 24th of July so it had been what a good almost two months and we hadn't heard anything and if there had have been any growth in his tumour at all they would have instantly contacted you and been like look there's something wrong. Yeah I don't know how it works. But everything with his tumour is fine. Everything with the tumour is fine. Everything. And fine does it go well. But of course. I'm joking you... babe. I'm joking. I know. But it's you just get... like everything with the tumour is it's fine. fine. It's kind of. What? See, this is how we're dealing with this situation at the moment. It's like you're joking and laughing, trying to, like, not get down about everything. But, yeah, basically, so, obviously the tumour isn't fine, but it's not growing. It's the same uh, size. Yeah. That's fine. It's, it's fine. <laughs> so, on to the seizures and medication, because that is where the most that's change has that. happened. So, basically, again, the last time i done the update was in January, and let me get this. So I basically have this on my phone. You're not going to be able to see it because it's not going to focus. Ah, there you go. Uh, where I log seizures and medications and stuff. There are some times, because I'm working at the moment, um, it's difficult for me to log exactly when he increases the medication or decreases. But when I have the time to, I'll always write it down on here. And I always note down seizures and how long they are. And luckily, I haven't yet missed a seizure if that you've had. there is something like different you exactly yeah. and that's this is a thing as well um which i'll get into but basically again so the last time i updated was in january and basically his seizures happen sort of roughly every two months or so he'll have like a seizure every two months um except from last month because like i said there's been a lot of changes in his medication and last month he had two seizures um, in the space of a week. He had one on June 19th and June 24th, but that's besides the point. Um, and also, his seizures can be affected by lack of sleep and stress and stuff, um, and we believe that those did kind of have some impact on those seizures. Seizures is, they're controlled, but obviously not as controlled as they would like to be. I forgot to mention, if you can hear like a noise in the background, it's because we have the fan on, because right now it is well, it's only 28 degrees, but believe me, 28 degrees is like, especially it's in It's been this every room. single day around the 30s or above, above 30s. Yesterday was 34 or so. Um, so, inside the house is getting like... Just hotter and hotter because it's... A greenhouse, pretty much. Because it doesn't go below a certain yeah, temperature, so it just stays constant. and gets hot. He started a new medication, uh, the brand is Ficompa, in case anyone knows medications, it's Ficompa. Started on 2 milligrams on 13th of March and from there he went up to 4 milligrams and then to 6 to 8 and then he was supposed to go to 10 but we had issues with his medications a couple weeks ago. So he started taking 9 instead of 8, which is fine, he should have gone up to 10 anyway, but the issue with this is you're having extreme like effects of this like extreme the side effects are pretty bad it's not just the fact that they're pretty bad it really affects his quality of life and he probably looks fine right now but that's just because he's sat down and not like trying to move or anything like that but right now he's not able to really walk well you can't you can i, I can walk when i hold him yeah. or when someone else holds him and also it affects you sort of emotionally as well because you... Yeah. So it's not just it affecting him physically, it's emotionally as well because 
right now he's dependent on other people basically to get around like sometimes if you need to go somewhere like he will literally ask me like can you take me to the toilet can you take me to the kitchen can you help me do this and that's something that you've never had yeah that's something that you've never had to do before and I mean it's obviously I will do anything that I need to do to help you because you know that I'm not just gonna let him sit there and be like immobile there was a time as well last week we went to go see your mum at work and we was waiting at the bus stop yeah that's that's something like I don't stop no because the thing is it's not like Obviously this is difficult for him and it's not easy but at the same time he doesn't just want to stop and he doesn't want to be housebound Like he still wants to go out and do normal stuff and I understand that and that's completely fine which is why I help him do what it is that he wants to do like if you want to go Like walking Mikey and walking Elvis is like the worst task right now because normally it will be fine Because two of us that's fine we can go one of us can walk one of us can pick up the dog poop <laughs> But we have to have three people go now, so normally it's me, Joao, and Joao's mum. Because I'm being like walks as yeah. well. Yeah, I have to walk. So the dog, yeah, she walks me now, and, Joao's and my mum walks, walks the, the dog. dog. And the thing is, I understand that you want to go out with Mikey because you love doing it, which is why obviously we work around it and we found a way to do it. But like, there are just little things. What I was gonna say earlier about when we went to go see his mum at work we was waiting at the bus stop and he was sat down and then there was this elderly couple and I think the guy was with crutches or something and obviously they look at him and sitting down he looks fine people just look at him and assume like everything is fine but it's not thank god for that of course thank god for that bro. of course yeah but sometimes it's really unfair yeah like the, I don't blame them at all when they realised yeah, they were not. telling him like profusely like sit down that's no, fine but when and he was in a normal situation and you you've seen this before I'm the first one to stand up to of help. course of course yeah that's the thing um but it's really bad like he was shaking so much and this is how bad his balance is I was holding him like I was holding him as I normally would do um, but he was shaking so badly because it uses so much strength for you to just stand up but it's like little things like that and there's little things that we haven't actually ever noticed before like simple things like on the train they have the priority seats the disabled seats yeah with like this that. situation we've been realizing how unfair is sometimes and how it's difficult it is. It's not just unfair, yeah, like difficult because to who like lives in this kind of state. I don't know. Yeah, I can't think of the word for it, but um, yeah, it's it's hard. The access access is really to, hard. It's too hard, and we have kind of new train stations, newish train yeah. stations, so they all have lifts. But there's like one each yeah. platform and if it happens being like on the first carriage, imagine, and the, the lift is at the very end yeah. of the, the train, well, close to the very end, end of the, the train, train yeah. um, I need to walk the whole, the whole way just to get the lift and it can just happen to get to the other place and I need something f to, to the back. other end. All that is like... It's really I, I think it might be just because I'm not used to be like like this. As the main problem is the balance, you can probably imagine me walking with Becca holding hands. People just think that I'm drunk mm -hmm. and judge and it's 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 nasty. That's yeah. like Sometimes it's pretty bad, like emotionally, like playing with my brain. Basically just like a bunch of things all put together and it's really difficult. One thing you were saying, like there's such a lack of access sometimes, yeah, sometimes and is, yeah. one thing that's really bad, we went to Colomb, um, Central Colomb, it's basically a it's mall. It's a mall. Yeah, it's a mall um, and some of the metro stations they don't have lift access. 
but was but so bad. The thing is, there were signs everywhere saying if you need assistance, go to customer service, something like that. Go to the customer service desk. But again, he's not the person to do that. And who says that they're going to be able to, that there's going to be a lift to help him upstairs? That he's just going to walk, like, we'll, we'll go find them and they'll say, yeah. like, there's nothing they can do. So basically, obviously, you're in the metro, you're underground as it is. So you need to go up the underground steps, then you need to go up to the level. And then as well, there's just like steps after steps after steps. And it's so bad. And like, it breaks my heart because, again, it's something that we've never had to realise before. Like, as you were saying, you've been to Colomb several times. Several times and I never thought about that. Okay, I'm sorry if the camera angle Bye. has changed a bit. The um, <laughs> My camera overheated so I needed to wait uh, to turn it back on for it to cool down because you're in front of the window right now and as I said the heat coming through this mm. window is, is hot. I mean we've been speaking about the whole mobility access thing for a long time because basically that's yeah, the you're main... Yeah, have to do some cuts for all of Of course. But the thing is this is the main point, it's the main part and it's something that is an issue and it's something that I want to voice, I want to, like I said, let you guys know about. But moving aside from that to the appointment yesterday, um, essentially, I mean, Joel's mum, like, here's not the, like, how do I say? Your doctor gave you his email, gave you his phone number and said, call yeah. me anytime if you're having any issues with these medications because he knew the side effects could be really bad like at the very beginning he was like you might feel dizzy yeah. it you depends balance. how the person is tolerating the yeah. this what's the word medication and he doesn't tolerate it very well at all which is why we're obviously in the situation he had this goal right and as this med is really really strong he hopes. and i have another three so i was in four Four medications. Four medications for epilepsy. You're now only on three now because you've got uh, another yeah. one out. Yeah, but um, I was on four, so I was kind of like expecting this um, to be hard anyway. So I just didn't know how strong this would be or how slow because it needs to be slowly increased of and course. all of that. So I started increasing and I was feeling like so like this is gonna work it's gonna be now this is gonna work mm -hmm. this needs to stop this just needs to stop so I jumped to four six well I didn't jump but you got what I you mean I was like I need to go I need to go I, this needs to stop yeah and then it happened I had a seizure yeah and then another before seizure. before a full week I have another, another one seizure, and yeah. I was like oh crap as all of this happens like it's hard for me to walk I don't have the access that I'm like used to because I, yeah. I could walk all of that uh, the seats the stairs the s people yeah. saying stuff that is really really unfair yeah um, all of this messes with my brain. But the seat, but the medication. And so it's the meds. That that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Is the meds is everything that happens, and it it just irritates. It's just bad. The medication, if it was working, if it did stop your seizures, then maybe it could be worth it. But because he's still having seizures and there's no proof that it is actually working, he's basically not living any form of a life at all. And he hates it, he really does. His mum called about a week ago and his doctor straight away said, okay, uh, go down to six milligrams because that's the next step down. Go down to six milligrams, please. And we'll speak about it next week at the appointment. So the appointment came round. His doctor has told him he needs to wait. So basically, medication has a like it's like with science it has a lifetime value so it basically stays in your body for a period of time even if you do decrease it because it has the, the lifetime value so basically we're gonna today is a week since you started taking six milligrams again so we're probably gonna wait until monday for you to go down again see if on six milligrams you're still okay summarizing what Shamal just explained to me because it's something that I didn't even ask about yesterday long what they yeah massively long appointment it was 
because over here like they're really really trying to obviously stop his seizures because essentially there's always a mortality risk with every living person there's always a risk of people dying so everyone always has that risk but then having seizures adds a risk to that so his risk is even higher with seizures but because his seizures are uncontrolled technically because he's still having them that adds another risk to it so he's on like yeah. the highest possible risk factor right now and his doctor doesn't like it none of us like it obviously you've seen it so yeah. yesterday he said he mentioned uh, he was explaining that situation and he mentioned um sudap i think yeah, i don't sudap. know if if you say it in english this way basically it's sudden true. sudden unexpected death in epilepsy so it's just basically it's a fatal complication of epilepsy the other part of the appointment, appointment yeah. is he's um he's gonna have this reunion Spe yeah meeting something yeah. with specialists from another center of epilepsy in portugal and discuss the fact of doing a surgery pretty much the point of this is I'm kind of in denying but the thing is it's that it's risky anyway so basically his doctor his doctor is um yeah his doctor is going to consult as you said with the other doctor from the other hospital the other center um basically provide him with the information the brain scans the information on his meds how it's not helping the seizures basically provide him with all of john's case information and ask um, is he okay for surgery? Can we proceed with this? Um, is his case not okay for surgery or do we need more time? That's what you said. Yeah. And basically this guy, this specialist in, is, and it's, he's not just a specialist in epilepsy, he's a specialist in uncontrolled epilepsy. So yeah. it's exactly the situation for Joao. Uh, specialist. Surgeon? Neurosurgeon, what... yeah. Yeah, in two months, I guess, we should know. Yeah. If it doesn't call me before. Yeah. His next appointment is going to be on September 24th, which is two days before we fly to England. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, I think I'm going to end this here because we've been talking for a while. I'm going to try and get this edited up and. This is a long video. I think she's going to struggle with like finding stuff to cut out i'm sorry if this is very if this video is really long i'm sorry if it is all over the place which it probably is going to be and the thing is we've been constantly talking pretty much for the last 40 minutes so i'm going to struggle to find stuff to cut out hopefully we would have been talking some kind of nonsense in some parts so i'll be able to cut it down if not i do apologize it is six months worth of updates in and one we keep trying as well to like we need to do it, we need to film it, we need to say it, we need to explain, we need to this yeah. and that and, and we don't do it so right now it's just like we're vomiting stuff yeah pretty much but the thing is I think now <laughs> I think now is a good time to do it because you had your appointment everything is now hopefully yeah. going to get better from here um, and hopefully yeah. by the time we go to England you won't be feeling this way yeah just please don't think, if I'm this way I hope not but if I'm this way, please just don't think that I'm drunk. I'm going to wrap this up here. One thing I do want to say as well is uh, with with his uh, memory treatment, which is the whole reason why you needed to come over oh, here in yeah, the first he... place. Um, with his memory treatment, his memory rehabilitation, um, he stopped that for a while because yeah, of Yeah, because I effects. went for one and I got there and my doctor was she noticed straight away that something was different yeah um and it would affect him and at that point yeah. i was walking by myself yeah but she noticed and she said we can be like evaluating is that what evaluating yeah. um your brain if you are under that medication that is gonna like effect. freeze your brain pretty much yeah if it because it would affect the results yeah, pretty much the, the average and the results and all of that yeah. so for a few months he did stop it but that's just because like you like you said the his doctor said he yeah. couldn't do it because it would affect it so now he has started it again he went for two appointments yeah. one was sort of like a re-evaluation of where yeah. he's at 
and then he done the first um he basically restarted it again he done the first thing Shit. he is starting it again um and they're basically going back from the beginning so right now we don't have any updates on whether it's better or worse because they can't compare these results to the ones he had before because his brain is in a different situation obviously than it was before so very quickly that is the update on the memory because i know that i haven't given my family any sort of updates on that really much um i'm sorry yeah i hope that this video has updated you guys um in sort of a good way if any questions we're here so yeah i'm gonna wrap up this video here so um if you did click on this video thank you so much for watching and again i do apologize if it was very long um, if you want to subscribe hit the button down below um and my videos will appear in your subscriptions box whenever i do apologize again that i haven't been uploading as i said actually i didn't say i said in one of the last clips i tried to film another day um i am working now uh, monday to friday monday through friday so it's more difficult for me to film and edit during the week but next week it's Siobhan's birthday so I'm gonna film hopefully there'll be a vlog coming to you soon and then I mean for Siobhan's birthday next week um, it's actually a week today oh my god I need to get this footage edited and stuff we just need to stop talking so I'm sorry I was gonna end this vlog 10 minutes ago I do apologize but anyway, like I said, um, if you want to see more of my videos, subscribe down below. Um, and we will see you guys in my next video, whenever that is. Bye.